All right, looks like I'm live. Um, I just realized that I got a... Anyway, hi, everybody. Um, I am Diane Dimich with ddstamps.com and welcome tonight. I have some great things I'm going to show you. I'm really excited about it. I'm hoping that people are out there. I know I might have turned on the button a minute earlier or so, but we'll wait a few minutes to see if everybody gets on, make sure everybody gets here. And I just realized that I don't think I'm on Facebook. I thought that I had had it all figured out. And of course I don't, which is fine. Um, I did post on my Facebook. If you can't find me here, come over to um, YouTube. And hopefully my website has it filming live. So anyway, if you're out there, let me know in the comments where you're, where you're, viewing, where you're from and where you're viewing from. That will just help me kind of keep track and make sure that I... My volume's up, you can hear me. Um, the camera has installed out. I know last time my camera stalled out a couple times during the video and actually it wasn't terrible because my voice kept going. And it kind of stalled out at times that, you know, you didn't need to see me anyway. You know? um, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and uh, hopefully there's somebody out there. Yeah, there's somebody out there. So anyway, leave me a comment. Let me know if you're watching. And I'm just gonna probably get started. So a couple things. Stampin' Up! has their retired list out and the sale starts on April 9th, which I believe is next Tuesday. So anything that's on that list, and it's all it's all located over on my um, website, and it's also in my newsletter, which if you haven't signed up for, you may wanna visit www.ddstamps.com and just sign up to get that because then you'll actually get, yay, Karen's here. Hello. Anyway, you'll actually get my my newsletters and then they'll help you know what's going on and, and where we are. So so that sale starts on, what did I say, Tuesday? Yeah, the 9th. Um, I'm going to show tonight my tutorial for April because uh, I fi did finish those cards. These are different than anything I've shown in the in the past couple weeks. I just did them over the weekend and they're all using the in colors, the new in colors. So let me switch cameras and let's hope this all stays together working tonight. That's my goal. Um, I did just let the dog outside because she needed to go out. But if she barks too much, I'll probably just swing over. My door is just a couple feet away to pick, let her in. The sad part is, is that when I'm in my stamp room talking, she's just like a kid. She thinks she's a... Uh, you know, I'm on the phone, so she starts barking, and so I was kind of glad she wanted to go out. Our weather here, I will tell you, has been beautiful the last two days. All the snow in my yard is gone. Uh, we did have a snowstorm last weekend, and the last couple days, and now they tell me this coming weekend we're going to get dumped on again. So, welcome to Red Lodge in the spring. So anyway, I'm going to start with my tutorial for April. So my tutorial, anybody that places an order with me gets a link to uh, PDFs of all the cards that I make and this this tutorial has six cards in it. If your order is over $50, I will send you a packet of supplies at the um, beginning of next month to make the project. So you'll get, you know, you'll get the cardstock, the designer series paper, the ribbon and the embellishments. You'll have to do the stamping yourself, but most of the cards that I do could be done with anything that you already have or um you know, any stamp sets that you already have. doesn't mean you have to have these stamps. All right, so I'm just, we'll go through them again. This one is pretty in pink. This stamp set, oh, I should have pulled that out. Where is it? I meant to do that, sorry. I used the softly said stamp set, and this is a stamp set that is on the um, online exclusives. And if you don't know, Stampin' Up! has an area on their, on, on their website in the store and if you click on it, it just says, uh, there's a, over in categories, it says online exclusives. And there are stamp sets and paper and bundles and new things and coming and, and that are in the online store. And if they're online exclusive like this one, they're only ever going to be online. They're never going to make it into a catalog. And the reason that for that is because catalogs take about two, two to three years to produce from start to finish. And so they needed a way to bring more products more update products faster because people want new things. So that's where they started with the online exclusives. And there's a lot of really fun stuff in there. There's some, oh, there's a 
latte set that I absolutely love. Um, there's one in there with zinnias that, of course, I was like, well, I don't really need that. But then seeing some things done with it, it's beautiful. Very colorful. I'm sure you can hear my dog. See, I'm talking, so she thinks I'm on the phone. All right, so this is, I used Softly Set, and I used all the stamp sets in this, and it kind of has that watercolor look to it. So the stamps are, I don't remember what they call them, but it was a, it was a, so when they do the red rubber, they just, it's dotted. And so you get the variations with the inking without, you know, your stamp is just variant because the, the rubber's got dots all over it for the coloring. That probably made absolutely zero sense, but oh well. If you have questions, let me know. <laughs> so anyway, this is pretty in pink. We love that color. It came back. Um, I used on here the designer series paper and the ink colors. Um, some little embellishments. They have actually in the new catalog, they have these embellishments and then they have some shiny glittery ones. And then the ribbon that coordinates. And then this one is Summer Splash. This happens to be my favorite color right now. I'm going to have to let her in. Just a second. <laughs> Come on. Sorry about that. I just don't want the neighbors mad. <laughs> um, again, I used, to, I used all the products here for Summer Splash. So it's the designer series paper, the embellishments, the ink. I sponged the edges with one of our brushes, and I'm going to do some of that, I think, tonight. And then again, the ribbon. This one was Shy Shamrock. Again, I did some of the, the um, ink brushes the, with that. And it, everything has the designer series paper, the ribbons, and the embellishments. So, And they're monochromatic. This one I loved, even though it was a little bit more fussy because I cut the thank you out and then mounted it onto the label. But I like the shadow behind it, and I like the way that looks. So, the, oh, color, peach pie. And last is this one. Very simple, any stamps that would work. And this one is called Petunia Pop. All right. Oh, so those are those are the cards there. And I'm going to show you these because these are some cards I don't think I've shown. And it's with this stamp set that I got when I was at, on stage in Houston a couple weeks ago called a Spotlight on Nature. This is um, another stamp set that's coming out in the new catalog. And for those of you that are, need to know, catalogs should be showing up in your mailboxes in the next two weeks. Um, they go live May 1st, I believe. I don't have it in front of me, but I think it's May 1st. Um, and then the Spotlight on Nature set is a bundle, and it comes with these two sets of dies, which are, I mean, there's so many in here. What is there, 12? 12 dies, and all different, like it's got that little eyelet on there. It's And the eyelet's on the big one too, so you can, you can mix and match them, you can use them together. Anyway, that's why it's called Spotlight on Nature. Um, I haven't even played with the dies yet. And I only played with the stamp set when I was in uh, down in Houston for on stage. So I'm just going to show you quickly some cards that we made. Really super simple cards. Um, and these are the, can you see those sparkly gems in there? So those are the in color gems. This of course is pretty in pink and it's coordinated with granny apple green and I never would have put those colors together. So I love that one. This one was watercolored. This was, we just used the ink. Similar to what I did last week with the no line watercoloring, only this time we stamped it in black and then water and then painted it. But I am going to do a little bit of watercolor tonight on some paper that I'm going to emboss. Again, this is more painting with the petunia pop and the pecan pie. Another set of colors I wouldn't put together. This one's awesome because this is peach pie and pecan pie with a little bit of granny apple green and a little bit of shy shamrock. Um, so anyway, that was fun. And then this one is Petunia Pop, Pretty in Pink, and Peach Pie, this little panel card. So those are all from that set. Oh, and this is the last one for my tutorial, which you can see I just took and used some scraps of my paper 
So they're just one by four inches, I believe, and five of them went up the card. I kind of did them kitty wampus because it was easier to do that. <laughs> and then I used a little snippet of each ribbon and I pulled the end to get a little fringy tassel on there. And then one of each color of the dots. Just so you can see the colors all together and they really do good, look good together. Oh, all right. So if, if uh, anybody is over on my website, I'm going to try and see if I can find you. Um, leave me a comment. I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. If you don't leave me a comment, you can't see me. So, all right. I don't know what I just did here. There. I think I just filled with, I don't think it changed. Oh, there we go. Hi, Diana. Oh, a little cool this evening, 53. <laughs> that was about, that was our, our high. We, we think that's a warm day here. All right, so I have myself a little notepad over here because I actually wrote stuff down and I kind of piled stuff around me so I don't have to go too far to get started. But I wanted to start by talking about this embossing folder. And you know, you had asked me what the name of it is. I couldn't even tell you, um, but it's in the mini catalog. And I will tell you, so it's this one here, the Laurel Flav Layered Florals 3D. It's on page 75 in this mini catalog. And even though this mini catalog, much of the stuff is retiring in there, this particular embossing folder is not. And so this is a 3D embossing folder. And if you don't know what that is, it's just a thicker embossing folder. This was brand new, like, I don't know, yesterday. I've used it a lot. <laughs> Um, it's just a thicker embossing folder and it makes for a thicker dimension to the cardstock that you put in there. And so when I'm doing my going through the big shot, which I'm not going to do on camera because I didn't really have room up here to put it. I have a little table next to me that I'll be running this through the big shot. When I say I'm going to run this to the big shot, I'm going to go over there. Um, but I use plate number one and then plate number four which is meant for the 3D embossing folders. And so that's all you use. Because that embossing folder is thicker, you don't need a, a second clear plate in there. And sometimes, depending on your machine, if you need, you may need a shim, a shim being a piece of cardstock. Sometimes a, a piece of copy paper works. It just depends, you'll know. You don't wanna force it through. You should never have to force it through. And, and, um, but if, if you're not getting a very deep impression that you think you should be getting, I'm going to give you a couple tips tonight on how to get a better impression and then try a piece of maybe a half sheet of cardstock in there. Just a little bit of something to give it just a little more oomph when it goes through the embossing machine. And the other thing is, is sometimes you want to emboss it. You want to run it forward and then reverse it out. So it's gone through the machine twice. And that helps. And the other thing that I've been doing with some of my cards tonight, and I'll show you where I did that, is I might run it through my embossing machine, ink whatever I'm, whatever I'm going to do to it. I'm going to do all kinds of stuff to it tonight. And then when it, everything is said and done, and I'm done with the piece of paper that I'm working with, I'll run it through the machine again. Because just working with it, adding ink, adding water, whatever I'm doing, you know, it's going to kind of mess with the dimensions of your embossing of your embossed images. And so, um, you just want to make sure that it's a nice crisp embossing. So these are two pieces of cardstock that I did yesterday. These were like the first two pieces I did. And I did pool party and I did, it's, it's the like petal pink. Um, and I haven't really done anything with them. And then, I remembered that sometimes people, before they put the cardstock through the embossing folder, will spray it with water. I'm going to keep those there. I'm going to spray this. So I just have a little bottle I bought, I don't know, probably at the dollar store. Put a little water on there, kind of spread it around, and I do the other side. And what that does is it breaks down the fibers of that cardstock, so the embossing will go through better. And then you're going to lay this on here, close it up and run it through the machine, which I'm doing over here.
And when you pull it out, it's still wet, but you get a much better impression. So the actual impress, and I, you might not be able to tell on camera, but when you, if you saw it in person, you could tell. Oh, maybe you can. See how this one is deeper? Um, and this one is, it's nice. It's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. But if you want a really deep impression, and some of the things I'm doing tonight, you will want a deep impression. Um, you, you know, just sprinkle it with a little bit of water. Now it is still wet and you want to make sure that it's dry before, before you do much more to it. The other thing that you'll find when you, when you put water on the paper is you won't have so many cracks in your paper. So sometimes, I don't know if this one does, I don't see any, maybe up here. Sometimes when you're doing the, the 3D embossing, if, if it's, sometimes it cracks the cardstock. So spray it with a little bit of water, make sure it gets wiped around it emboss it. And then if you're not going to, I mean, you're going to want to have it dry, but I will tell you, I did these earlier today. I love the impression I got. So I got a really deep impression, but then I just set them aside to dry and you can see that they're warped. They're not flat, which is fine. Um, cause I can just use a lot of adhesive and stick it to something, which I probably will do because I'm going to use these tonight probably for something. But like this one, I probably would take, I don't know, you could even take a block. If you have a block, set it like that. It doesn't take very long to dry and then it'll dry flat or even a book. You know how we used to do with leaves, but don't put anything way too heavy because you really don't want to squish that, that embossing. Boy, that is beautiful. I loved this embossing folder and I ordered it the minute that it became available and then it sat on my shelf. And so then I was looking at it thinking, you bought this, now you have to use it. And so um, that's why I'm using it this week. So remember, I can see your comments, I can see your questions. So if you have any while I'm doing things, I actually can see them pop up, if, especially if you're on YouTube. I don't know about Facebook and my website, I'm hoping. Um, but go ahead and ask. So I'm gonna do this next card. We're gonna do Blackberry Bliss. Okay, so this time we're gonna take the folder and so there's two sides to the folder. This is the side that's raised, the flowers are raised over here. I don't know if you can see that. And this is the side where the flowers are indented. Now, companies that make 3D folders usually put some kind of a branding on them and they consider this the front of the folder. So this would be considered the front for your card. So this is where, you know, you put your cardstock in here and you run it through, you're going to get a deep impression like that. This side, you're going to get debossed. Not a bad thing because I'm going to show you tonight <clears throat> things to do with debossed cardstock. Tonight we're going to do, we're going to use this side right now. And I'm going to come in with a Versamark ink, which is just a clear ink. And I'm going to ink up my and I'm not pushing real hard because I don't really want ink down in the, down in the flower, in the holes of the flower. I want the ink to just be on the flat parts of this particular embossing folder. And I did not, I meant to re-ink my Versamark ink and I didn't do it, but I think we'll still get, you'll still get the gist of what it's going to do. So once you've done that, you're going to lay your cardstock in there. You're going to fold this shut. You're going to run this through the embossing machine. You notice I did not wet the paper this time. I could have, um, but my feelings are that that Versamark ink is, I don't really want that to spread. So I didn't really want to get that ink all over. Not that it, it's clear you can hardly see it. I don't know if this is going to be a very good one to show it. Oh, you know what? It didn't do very well. So I'm going to show you how you can put it back in the groove that it was in. Just find where it was. Open back up. I probably should have. Let me see if I have another Versamark that's inkier. How's that for word usage? Oh yeah, this looks like brand new. Perfect. So I, so this has to, you have to make sure that this piece stays though. When you put it back through the machine that it's 
in the same flower in the same debossed image in the groove. So hopefully now we're going to do this. We're going to make sure that's in the right spot, which you can feel it's not moving. We're going to close this up and we're going to run this through again. And this time, this is where I'm going to add a piece of cardstock just to give it a little bit deeper impression. And it's amazing to me when I just add that one piece of cardstock, the difference that it makes putting this folder through my machine. You wouldn't think that a piece of cardstock would make that big of a difference, but it's amazing. I suppose I probably should have used a lighter. Well, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, what happens with Versamark ink is it leaves a watermark. And so you have wherever the Versamark landed on here, it's a little bit darker than the rest of the cardstock. And so it landed like on the, on the flat parts of this. And we'll just have to let that dry for a minute. I'm going to try it with, I'm going to try it with a pool party. Because I can line that up. Might be able to see it better on the lighter piece of cardstock. And like I said, you really need to have a well inked, you know, a well inked Versamark pad. Versamark ink is very sticky. And I'm gonna do something else with it a little bit later, but you can also emboss with it with like embossing powder. All right, I put that back together. I'm gonna to put it back in my machine. I'm gonna run it through with a piece of cardstock shim. Go one way, and then I'll flip it and go the other way. And let's see what we got. Pull this out, open it up. Again, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it but our flowers are much lighter than the background. And I don't know if you can see it. I'll put some cards together with these two pieces when they're dry and post them on my face or on my um, website. Maybe you'll see better. But Versamark ink is great because like I said, you can take a stamp and stamp with it on cardstock and you get a uh, Lighter impression, let me show you. I'm gonna grab one that's, not that one, sorry. Here, we'll do this flower. I think this will show up really well. So we're gonna do this cheerful daisy. You can tell this was a well-used stamp set. I'm gonna use the solid stamp. Now I'm probably gonna get my I'll use my older, oh, I used my older one. Maybe that's why. All right, so I'm inking up my stamp and then I stamp it down on my cardstock and you can see it looks wet. So when this dries, it actually dries darker than the rest of the cardstock. So you just get a real subtle background with any stamp. The other thing that you can do with Versamark, like I said, is you can stamp it and you can sprinkle it with embossing powder and heat set it and the embossing powder will stick to where the, where the ink is. Anyway, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what it looks like on the embossing. It looks, it looks much better in person than it does on camera, which does not surprise me. All right, put that in my pile of things to work with. All right, Versamark white craft ink over the image. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna, I actually can use this one because I think this will look cool. So this is the, this is the Blackberry Bliss. And this time I'm gonna take a white craft pad. So our white craft pad comes, you get an ink pad and then you get a reinker. It comes on with nothing in it and you can fill it with the white ink. And I see this is not, this white ink is really thick and I've been playing with it a lot. So I'm just gonna put some more ink on this pad. 
Hope I can get it mushed in there. Um, yeah, the, the crafting takes a lot, it takes a while to dry, but it's kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna take this embossed image and I'm gonna take my white ink pad. You know what I'm gonna do though for sometimes when I re-ink, just so you're aware, I like to move my ink around. So once I put ink on there, even on a regular ink pad, I will take a spoon or a bone folder, something just to kind of smear that ink around and make sure that it gets settled in the whole pad. Once you've done that, you're going to take this and you're just going to swipe it across your cardstock in all different ways. And you just do it lightly. And what you end up with is all that embossed areas get hit with that white ink. And it just gives you a really cool looking background. Or actually, it doesn't even have to be a background. It could be the, the whole card. I mean, if you're doing, like me, lots of sympathy cards, this is a great way to do it. So that is just the white ink on Blackberry Bliss cardstock. So any color cardstock works. It just gives you a different look every time. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Okay, so this is the, what, the one I did earlier. This is on black cardstock. And I actually did a couple of them. And so this one here, this one actually got, you can see where I got white down inside there and it doesn't matter because nobody's going to nitpick that except for me when I look at my card and say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. However, I look at it now and I think, you know what? That just makes a really cool background and I'll pretend like I meant to do it. So the problem here is that, the only problem is, is that this has to dry. You can hit it with a heat gun to dry it or you can set it aside it's not going to warp. It's just going to stay this, this way. The one thing that is going to happen is the white ink is going to fade a little bit. So it's not going to be so white. Um, and if you want it to be whiter, I would let it dry and then do another layer. But make sure when you're doing it, I don't want to, that's wet. I don't want to put it with the rest. Make sure when you're doing it that you don't press too hard because you really just want that white ink to sit right on top of those embossed images. All right, so that is white craft ink over the image. All right, so now I'm going to take this one that I made here and I'm going to bring in some ink pads and I'm going to show you how you can take your inks and put color onto these. I'm going to use our regular inks, but a person could use watercolor pencils, crayons. Uh, you could use your blends. I don't normally use my blends over white craft ink just because I think it kind of wrecks the tip. And it's just something I don't do. I think the blends I'm going to do something with them tonight that you'll see that I'm going to do with them. But with this particular thing, I just don't like my blends in my white ink. I don't know why. It kind of ruins the... To me, it feels like I've ruined the tips. All right, so I'm going to pick up some ink and I'm using Calypso Coral. And I think what you're going to find is you want to use an ink that's light enough, but not, and not, you know, kind of in the mid-tones, not too dark, not too light. And you're just going to pounce over that white ink where you want the color to be. And you don't have to be perfect because where it's white, it's white. And where it's not, it's black. And that's not gonna matter if that gets color on it. So you just pounce all over it. And I'm just gonna go around. What I found is I, you know, these sponge daubers work great because they're pretty tiny and you can get a pretty tiny spot. So you just go around and Pounce them all. I hope you can see the color changing. I could maybe I zoom it in a little bit. Maybe does that help? I feel like I'm getting so fancy with my setup and it's really not that fancy. It's just something that I actually could do. <laughs> and it wasn't complicated. That was that was like my main thing. Whatever I get set up with, it can't be complicated because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time fiddling with cameras. All right, so you just pounce your ink. And again, like I said, if you, if you do this 
and that ink fades away. Now see the white has already faded away as much as it's going to because I did this last night. Um, once this is dry, once this, this ink is dry, you can always come back in and add more. So you can spend as much time as you want on your card. All right, then I'm going to come in with some blue. Cool party. Ink up this. And I decided that I kind of liked these little flowers blue, although I'm not convinced that they really show up. Yeah, I guess they do. Probably should have a different, a brighter blue. Maybe not pool party. Although I can see it. I don't know if you guys can. So you just pounce those. And then the last color I'm going to come in with is green for the leaves. And I'm using Old Olive. And you might ask how I pick these colors. I just randomly pick colors that I like. Um, they all come from... Well, I guess these two are in the same color family. Old Olive's in a different color family, but I just picked colors. Ooh, this Old Olive is very juicy. So I hope, I'm sure you can see this. Wait till I show it to you up close and personal here. And like I said, you don't have to be perfect because it's surrounded by black. And so it's not going to show up. The only thing that's going to show color is the little sections that have the white ink on them. So even if you randomly did a flower or a leaf, the only one who's ever going to see that is probably you. Unless you have friends that are just, you know, looking at your cards to say, hey, did you, get the, did you mean to do this? And some people are like that, but I don't let them bother me. All right, really super easy. Yeah, you can't see the pool party as well. I guess you can if I put the camera up close. You can see that it's pool party. But pool party is a really light color. So I probably, if I really wanted it to be a bold show up color, I probably should have used like boho blue or um, is it Coastal Cabana? Coastal Cabana would have been a good one. Or even Summer Splash. The new one. Anyway, so that's how you do colors. And then you've got a layer for a card that is really super easy to put together. So I love that. I'm just gonna have a whole pile of little card stocks here. I'm having a I'm having a surgery tomorrow. I'm getting a new uh, pacemaker put in. I've had one for 15 years, so don't panic anybody. Um, I just have a really slow heart rate. And so I'm having one put in tomorrow, a new one finally, my battery's dying. And so I'm supposed to take it easy all weekend. So I'm gonna have all these pieces done and ready to go. And then next week when I come live on Thursday, I can show you what I did with them all. All right. White craft ink over image, regular ink over image, blends, ink. All right, so now we're gonna come in now we're going to start getting into the stuff that might get your hands inky. If you notice, I can't really tell right now, but, uh, you know, using black ink and all this other stuff, my hands have gotten kind of inky this week, which in my opinion, here, I'm just wiping this off. I don't know if you know, but I use, you get them at the auto parts store, my other job, and they're like, Spongy, they're like the cloths that we get, the purple cloths that we get. Anyway, uh, what I do is I buy them at the auto parts store because they're cheap and I cut them up. You can see I use these a lot. Once in a while I toss them in the washing machine and you don't dry them because when you dry them, they get hard. I've got one laying around here somewhere that was sitting out. So then they get really hard. The chamois get hard, but all you got to do is throw it in the washing machine and wash it and then it's clean and ready to go to the next time, even though it doesn't look clean. All right, so this time I'm taking a piece of just our basic Whisper White cardstock. And I'm putting it into the folder. And I am not going to get this wet because I am going to color it with blends. And I don't want to wait to have to wait till it dries. And honestly, I think once you see what I do with this piece of cardstock, ooh, I hope that didn't hurt your ears. Um, once you see what I do with this piece of cardstock, 
uh, it's not going to matter. The, the image is going to be fine. All right, so I'm taking this piece, and this is the embossed side, and I'm doing the debossed, but the back of it. So you can see that these are like pools. And then I'm going to come in, and this is another one that doesn't matter how you color. You don't have to be perfect, okay, is what I'm saying. So, like, I'm just going to color in the magnolia here. No, that might have been a leaf. Oh, well. Um, I'm just putting some color on here. And if you need to, you can look at the... You actually can pull the embossing folder out and lay it next to you so you can see. This is going to look like a complete mess when I get done coloring it. You're going to be like, what in the world is she doing? But I'm just putting... Oh, that was a leaf. <laughs> We're going to make that a flower. Petal. Let's see. And I'm, this color I'm actually using is, I think it's Flirty Flamingo. I should have used the same colors that I used to color in the other one. And you can just see, this is going to be much bolder and brighter. And most anything that you have, you could color in this debossed image with. So you could use inks, sponge daubers, you know, these sponge daubers, you could use the brushes. You could use pencils, crayons, anything to put a color into, I think I got it all, the debossed area. And then if you want to, you can come in and some of these crevices here, I can add a little bit of, I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of highlight. Just because I have blends and I like to use both colors. But when I do that, I do want to go back in and just blend them a little bit more. Just a little bit. Because like I said, when this is all said and done, you're not even going to be able to believe what it looks like. All right. I suppose I better follow through, Diane. Follow through. And I will tell you that I was playing to last night with this and I was getting ready to go to bed when I was laying on my couch and thought, oh, I wonder if blends would work. I wonder what that would look like. And so I got up and made a few pieces of cardstock and went, oh yeah, that works. I tried it a couple other things too. I kind of got obsessed this week with this embossing folder. That's why I'm showing it. So I'm just going to go in and add just a little bit more color so that I don't have those blend lines. And this will just blend out. Now when I'm all done with this coloring, and I'm done finishing adding all the ink to it that I'm going to add to it, um, this is one that I would run back through the embossing folder again. Because I have messed with all these little embossed areas and so it, you know, it starts to fall a little bit. But when I put it back through the machine, it will, it'll, uh, it'll emboss again. So I'm just putting yellow into the middle of these magnolias. And to save time, I'm just going to put yellow flower buds in here. This is really juicy. You know, the fibers on this basic white cardstock, when they get squished in the embossing machine, then they end up soaking up more ink because the fibers are broken. Oh, this is my old olive and it's been well used on that end. So I'm just going to pull it in on this end. If I can cover up that leaf, make it a little greener. And oh, there's a leaf. I'm sure you guys don't like sitting watching me color, but this is going to be worth it when you see what I do with it. Oh, 
That is dry, 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 dry. Let's see, what do I got here? I have a lot of old olive dark. Oh, that's granny apple green. Okay, we're gonna try granny apple green. I guess I just thought that I used. So I'm just gonna add some in there. And when you're looking up close, you'll see that this does have lines in it. And that's kind of where I'm putting the, the darker color. So yeah, so the fibers on this are busted. And so that's why these are soaking up so much ink, which that's all right. I loved the look of the blends because it was so vibrant. And again, like I said, you don't have to have it be perfectly in. Yeah, I need to. My head in the way? No, a little bit maybe. No. All right. Let's see. I need to get a new one of those. All right, so I do see a flower here that doesn't have a yellow middle. One here, one here, one here. And I will say that I, I had planned to color them in um, with blue, but I'm gonna stop because this they can have this can have white flowers with yellow in, insides. Ooh, all right. So once you get that all colored, then you think, oh, that's really beautiful, Diane. No, it's not, it's not, and I know that. However, when I come in with my Memento Black ink, so this is my Memento Black. The reason I'm using Memento Black is number one, it's my favorite black ink to use, and number two, I've used blends. And so I wanna use the ink that you use with blends because I don't want this to get smeared. So I'm using the Memento ink in black, and you're gonna drag this like you dragged the white ink. And you're just going to take it and you're going to drag it right across your cardstock. And the magic is unbelievable. So I could do that and just have it have a real country look, but you can just keep adding ink as much as you want. And it gets darker and darker and darker. I mean, you could do this till it was black. But it, all those little crevices where all those embossing parts are, are all popping back so that you can see them. But it just is amazing, beautiful, I love it. Um, and again, like I said, what I will do with this, once I'm done putting black to it, another little tip that a demo, uh, not a demonstrator, but a, another rubber stamping gal did. I like it this way, but you can keep going till it's black, black, black. You can take a Sharpie, a black Sharpie, fine tip, and just color around your edges. Before you did that though, I would run it through the embossing machine again. So you would get the, so you know exactly where the ridge is. So once I've done this, isn't that pretty? I love it. I hope this, I know that we all have embossing folders. All right, so again, I'm gonna run this through again. So what I wanna do is you wanna make sure that you get that right in the same, the same spot it went through the first time. Some people tape them in there, but I got it in there. So I'm going to run this through again. Oh, I must have my plate crooked. And then when you pull it out, then it's really, it's embossed a lot more. But again, like I said, you can keep adding ink as long as, as much as you want until you're happy with your background. I'll show you this one I did earlier. So this was done with blends. This one was done with the sponge jobbers and the ink pads. And I just kept rubbing it with black ink until it was black, black, black. And then, so you can see the difference. The blends gives it, um, here, I'll show it the same size, the same way. The blends obviously gives it more 
um, color, but you have to realize that I use lighter colors on this one. I use um, I used Pool Party, Calypso Coral, and Old Olive. And so you can see the blue flowers, but I think these white flowers with the yellow insides are cuter. I don't know, I might add more black to that one. So that is just a really fun technique. Now, one thing that I did see somebody do, and I'm, I might do it. I'm trying to decide if I do it tonight for this one. I'll show it to you. What I did is after I had that all done, then I took my Versamark ink and I ran it across my piece of cardstock. You need to make sure you do it very lightly, just a little bit. And then I added gold embossing to it. And I ended up, so I ended up with too much gold embossing. You can see here where I, you know, I was, I didn't think I had enough and I hit it really hard here. But if you look, your flowers, all the raised images around the borders have gold embossing and it's just really pretty. And then, so I just used a little piece um, and this was with blends. So I colored it with blends, the same thing I did here, everything exactly the same. And then I just took another piece and stuck it down the inside there. And I'm gonna put some sentiment on here, maybe a ribbon. But I like the gold embossing. So let me show you, what the heck? It's only paper, right? So you're gonna take your embossing folder, except I'm gonna not use my cleanest one, I'm gonna use this one. And you're gonna rub it gently right across your cardstock. And see, this is, then I go this way just because I think, oh, it needs more. Yeah, it's pretty light. We'll see what it looks like. And then I'm going to sprinkle it with gold embossing powder. And one of the things that we've done is we've done a lot with this piece of cardstock, so a lot of it was probably still wet. I'm going to blow this off and flick it off over here. That's the other thing. I probably should wait till it's dry and then do the embossing and use a this is going to have a lot too. And use, uh, you know, those little, those little pillows filled with something to take the static away. Because this card really has a lot of static to it. And then if I come in with my heat gun, you do want your heat gun to heat up before you actually put it to your card so that it melts it right away. This has a lot of gold on it. <laughs> And then I'm just going to lean it on there, and hopefully you can see this. Yeah, it did pretty good. I'm just going to move this around so I don't burn my fingers. Some people use a paper clip or a clothespin or a board. Uh, this turned out kind of cool because the gold is really around that mid that flower right there a lot and then just lightly on all the rest of it i like it though but again i think next time i need to wait use the static remover and then do the versamark and then the gold embossing but it really steps up this piece of cardstock. I mean, it makes people, people are gonna think, oh my goodness, how did you do that? And embossing is always a, a wow anyway, but you can see I, I got a lot in here again, and that's just because my hand was on there. So the oils from my hand picked up that embossing, but it's pretty. Anyway, that's how you end up with a card that looks like this. Not quite done yet, but in my pile. Yay! Okay. Hope you're not too tired yet. Um, if anybody has a question, let me know. All right. I'm coming down to the last thing in there. Let me move this piece of paper out of here because now I have gold embossing. I hadn't planned to emboss, but it's so cool. I wanted to show that. So I'm just going to bring in, this is clean, but this doesn't have embossing powder on it. And this next bit we're going to do is a little bit more. 
We're going to take a piece of watercolor paper this time. Maybe two pieces of watercolor paper. And I just cut these kind of smaller because I'm just really playing with it. I'm going to use a block. And the block is just going to be my palette because I really wanted these colors to be bold, bold, bold. So I'm using three colors. We all know in color theory, you know, you use blue, yellow, and red, and you'll end up with orange and green and purple. So these can kind of blend together on your piece of cardstock, and you're not going to end up with brown unless they're all mixed in together. So I'm going to just put a drop. I'll tell you what colors I've used in here. I think this is blueberry bushel. Don't need a lot. I just put a drop on my block. My block is just my palette. And then a uh, crushed curry. Well, you know what? I'm not going to use... Yeah, I am. I probably would use Daffodil Delight if I were going to do it again. <laughs> Rachel's not tired. <laughs> She's not doing all the work. Oh, I'm not tired either. I kind of look forward to this. This, oops, that, I got two drops of real red. All right, um, this is really good for me to get back into doing this stuff. So I'm gonna use a glass of water. And again, I'm gonna use my water painter. And this is a different water painter. I'm using the middle water painter from the one that I used last week. Um, and I'm not, I didn't put water in here cause I kind of want to control the amount of water. I mean, first I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to use my water spritzer and I'm going to spritz this cardstock. Because I want these colors to move. So I'm going to go in with, get some water, pick up some blue, dump it on my, I know, right? Look at that. It just kind of spreads, but you can go ahead and, because you can always bring in more water. I'll put a little more blue in there. Make I want these pretty bold. Um, then I'm going to rinse my rinse my brush. I'll go into the yellow this time, and I'm going to do the same thing. And really, there's no rhyme or reason. You just put color down because <laughs> it doesn't really. You don't you don't have a lot of control. Oh, I need, need some water. So I'm now I'm going to go in and do red. You don't really have control as to where it's going to go because. You sprayed water on it, and it's just going to move where it wants to move. Um, I do want more over here. This seems to be dry. So I'll just do that. And you, it just, it does. I mean, it's just like, well, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. So there's that. I would like some more purple. So I'm going to bring in some red next to this blue. Oh, that must have yellow in it. Okay, now we have a little bit more brown. A little purple in here, a little red. All right, and then that dries. Now, I'm not going to do both sheets tonight because you get the idea. You let this sit, and you think, oh, that's kind of ugly. It's the same thing I thought last night. I went to bed, thought, well, I'll see in the morning what they look like, and if I don't like them, I can redo them. Well, through the night, they bleed into each other and move around, and I take the puddles off the edges just at the beginning because I don't really want puddles on my edges. Anyway, those colors move around and they end up looking something like this. So this is the one I did last night. This one really shows the greens and the purples that are in there, but this is where I, I use crushed curry, which is a darker yellow, and I kind of wish that I'd use Daffodil to light because I think the, the, the yellow would be more vibrant, but that's okay. It also could be the fact that I probably had dirty water. <laughs> this is probably the second one. I'll show you the other one I did too. Anyway, so I'm going to take <laughs> this piece just like this and I'm going to run it. It's, it. And it's watercolor paper, so it's thicker. We're not going to get it wet because watercolor paper has a lot of fibers in it. Um, and so it's going to break up as it is. We're going to lay this where we want it on the embossing folder. So you, it, cause it's a smaller piece, I can kind of pick which, which flower I want. And I kind of want this flower right here to be right kind of in the middle. So there, my folder's ready to go. 
Then I'm going to run this through and emboss it. So I ran it through twice, and you could actually hear it breaking up those fibers. So you just end up with a piece that is embossed. And then I'm going to actually put it back where I had it. And this time I'm going to, oh, I think I'm going to live on the edge. I don't want that to move, but if I tape it down in there, I'm going to have white edges and I don't really want that either. Again, I'm just going to leave it like this and then hope for the best. <laughs> I have another sample. So then I'm going to come in with my black on this side. going directly onto the embossing folder. And again, I'm gonna, I probably should have re-inked this too, but put a lot of ink on there. Make sure that's in the right spot. Close it, run it through the machine. When I'm running it through the machine, I'm taking it forward to the end and then I'm backing it through again. And you end up with a piece of cardstock that gets the black, to, kind of looks like batik to me. Now I could keep going and I could keep doing the black and adding more black and adding more black and adding more black. However, I wanted to clean this up. Really it's just water and I'm gonna use a Kleenex. You could use, probably this would be better. You will end up with ink. After I'm done with this tonight, I'm going to take it into my kitchen and I'm going to actually going to run it in water because it'll get all the, there's little pieces of black in there and I want that all out of there. Because if you look closely at this one, I still had black ink in there and so some of my corners got black. Now this one's dry, so that turned out pretty good. Um, anyway, back to this one. So I've got this piece. And if I want it really, really, really dark, it looks fine this way. And the colors are just where the colors are. If you want it really dark, this is what I did with this one. I kind of put it in the same spot, very similar. But I took my Sharpie, which is really easy to do. And I'll, I, I would tell you not to use your good markers. Use a Sharpie because the watercolor paper is really rough. Um, you kind of put it through the ringer. And if you use your good markers, you know, it'd be like using your good ribbon scissors or fabric scissors. You are going to end up with a tip of a marker that is kind of shredded. But this works. And this is only if you really want everything to be black, black, black. I like the colors, um, but I like the black too. I just thought that was really cool. So like I said, don't use your grid markers, use the Sharpies. And again, you could do this in any color. It didn't have to be black. You could do it in any color, any of these techniques that I did, any of the techniques that I did, this one, people were doing them with like night and navy. It was beautiful. So any dark color. So you just color that in and then you've got a piece really different looking. I mean, we did a lot of different things. Um, with embossing folders. See, I showed you this card, right? Yeah. And then this is our gold embossed. Look at all these. And it was just an embossing folder and some product that I already had. I don't know. Can you see that? It, it, the flowers really do are lighter. I love this one. Anyway, anybody have any questions? Oh, look at that. I need it to be done by eight because I have some stuff I have to do before I go in tomorrow and this is gonna be perfect. All right. I don't see any questions. Let me check my website. Oh, perfect. All right. If nobody has any questions, that's it. 
have fun with your embossing folders and all this stuff that I just kind of pulled out. And really, even tonight, as of, <laughs> as of six o'clock tonight, I was actually, um, somebody sent me another technique. And what they had done, and I might try that, is they took their embossing folder and ran it through with a couple of different pieces of cardstock. Oh, let me pop this up here. So you take your embossing folder and say you do these three colors or whatever, whatever colors you want to do. And then they cut out, like they paper pierced it. So they cut out the leaves or so the flower on this one and they placed it on the flower on this one. You want to glue it down. They were doing, I mean, they did leaves different colors. They did flowers different colors. It might not have been this embossing folder. Just remember that this will work with, these techniques will work with any embossing folder you have. Um, and they just placed some in there. Not all of them, not everything was paper pierced or pieced, but oh my gosh, it was so pretty when it got done. I thought if I only had another few minutes, I would figure out how to do that and show people, but I can save that for another time. So anyway, um, you don't have any questions, I'm going to head on out of here. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, it's a good thing that stampers like to share because I haven't done a lot of techniques for a while and I, you forget how much fun they are. I love playing with ink and I love seeing what it can do with it. And, you know, I, I don't emboss very often, but this week I was embossing. Um, with different things. And some of these cards that are pretty fancy are gonna need an embossed sentiment on them just because they're so fancy. So I didn't really make a card in front of you tonight and I planned to, oh, I had one over here. There, here's, I didn't do it, but that's all right. I'll do it next week, but I will show you the piece that I did. So this piece here, as you can see, it was embossed and I dragged the Calypso Coral ink pad across it. And then I took this, a sponge and I just sponged ink all over it just to give it that subtle look. So my plan is I'm gonna add it to Calypso Coral, of course, cardstock. And I have, oops, <laughs> Calypso Coral ink or ribbon that I'm gonna to add to it. I was going to use this so a sentiment in this stamp set because this is one of my favorites. It is going out with this die set which is my one of my absolute favorites so if you don't have this one these are really awesome frames in fact you are probably going to see some of these pieces that i've done done up with some of these frames next week anyway i was going to use this and then just to remind people about that online exclusives our circle punches are on there if you don't have circle punches this is a one and a quarter and a two inch circle punch stampin up brought them back as online exclusives because demonstrators were so disappointed when they retired them. Um, but they don't want to put a bunch of products that are basic products into the catalog so that they have room for more fun stuff. Does that make sense? That's why we have an online exclusive. They can carry over some of those things that don't necessarily have to be in a catalog. Um, we know where to find them, those of us who have been around for a long time. So anyway, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Give me a, send me an email. I am going to be around, like I said. Um, taking it easy all weekend. I'm going to show you. Oh, I better show you this because it's so you can see how it's bleeding out. I used a lot of the color. So you can see how my real red turned more orange. It'll be interesting tomorrow to see what that looks like. Tie dye, which is actually kind of pretty. I could just use that. I wouldn't even have to emboss it. However, it's fun. So thank you and have a great evening. Thanks, Diana, for the prayers. Have a great night. Thank you very much. See ya. See you next Thursday. Bye.